Since we've already covered the basics of the stock screen, the main goal of using this screen most effectively is to make sure that you make the correct purchasing decisions when it comes to your raw materials that you have to buy from suppliers, as well as generating manufacturing orders for products that you need to sell off to your customers. So there are two workflows that take place inside of the stock screen. The first workflow, which we'll cover in this video, is the purchase to stock. So it is any item that you purchase from your suppliers and create purchase orders for, so that way you can have those items in your inventory. And you'll be able to see in real time from this video how that workflow affects the numbers you'll see inside of the stock screen. Now, by the time you're watching this video, it's very unlikely you have enough data inside of your account to do this workflow effectively. So the main purpose of this is to educate you about it prior to getting all of your data in and all of your uh, orders coming in and set up. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And um, the first thing I want to do is head over into our material tab where it's only going to shortlist the items which we buy. And doing a purchase workflow is very easy. So having said that, um, what we'll do next is from the basics that we've learned about how the relationship between in stock expected committed reorder points creates a missing or excess value, what we'll do first here is put in the hyphen, which will create a short list through the filtering mechanism of every single item that's currently missing from inventory. Now remember from the previous video, if there's a negative number here, it means that the actual demand for that item is higher than whatever we have in stock or expected to arrive in the future. So we need to create those purchase orders in order to increase the expectations so that way we can get our inventory demands lined up with the commitments. So um, to do this, and you can see very clearly, we have uh, beige paint. I have four liters in stock. I have six liters expected, so that's a total of 10 but I have 13 and a half liters committed. So what does this mean? This means that I'm missing 3.5. Four plus six is 10 minus 13.5 minus zero equals negative 3.5. And now that I have a negative number, then I need to generate a purchase order workflow for that. So when I generate a purchase order, keep in mind that we have six liters presently expected for the beige paint. So when I generate, when I choose the buy option, it will pop up and say to me, okay, so here is the material called paint. And this is the quantity in which you want to purchase because this is the amount that's currently missing in stock that you need. And this is the supplier because on the material card, the supplier by default is the paint supplier. And there is an option here to add other missing items from the same supplier to this PO. So if you recall from the material uh, videos, I did mention that the same supplier, uh, when you do a purchase order workflow, it will look at all materials that have the same supplier associated. And then you can simply check that box and it will auto aggregate the purchase order for you. So if you look behind this uh, box, you'll see that the default supplier for those items there, which are all presently missing, are um, part of the default supplier. So I can add those to a single purchase order if I wish. And by doing so, I can create and open that order, and you'll see the four items presented to me here. And that is the simple way to use the stock screen to generate a purchase order for materials that are missing. Now what happens is these materials that are now um, created in the PO are actually increasing the expected quantity of those items. So taking a close look at our paints here on the materials tab in the stock, stock screen, you can see that the expected quantity for the beige paint, which used to be six, has now increased by 3.5. And now that it has increased by 3.5, uh, from six, it now is equal to 
And as a result, the formula balances itself out. 4 liters plus 9.5 um, equals 13.5 minus 13.5 minus 0 equals 0 uh, total missing or excess. So this means I'm not above the demand. Um, uh, I'm not, my commitments are not higher than what is expected or currently in stock. Instead, I'm in a pretty good position. Now, of course, if things change in my business and I need to set a reorder point, let's say for 10 liters, then it will still go negative because that is my minimum reorder point of what level is acceptable in stock. So according to our platform, um, if your minimum order point is, uh, is uh, at zero, then, sorry, if your minimum order point is at 10, but your uh, difference between your commitments and in stock expected availabilities is zero, then it will still generate its own commitment and make it minus 10 following the same logic of the formula. Now, something to also mention here is that when an expected quantity is created, because it exists on that purchase order, and you can see that from the inventory Intel component, this is the PO-1 PO with that 3.5 liters available, then you'll see that the difference here is that when the material is accepted into inventory, then what will happen from that purchase order that I just created is it should drop by 3.5. So this should go from 9.5 to six, and then my in stock should go from four to 7.5. So if we head into our buy section, which we haven't covered yet, but this is what's called the buy screen, and we go to the PO that was made, and I choose receive all on it, then you'll see that the movement had taken place against the beige paint, as we had mentioned before. The expected quantity dropped by three and a half, and the in-stock quantity increased by three and a half. And when that happens, then everything is good to go. What will start taking place from that point forward is when I'm completing a manufacturing order uh, and the commitment is, is there, it takes it from inventory and then it also drops the commitment as well. So those 3.5 liters that need to get used up here um, will eventually, let's say if I have a manufacturing order that consumes three and a half, it'll drop from 7.5 to four and then this 13.5 will drop down to 10. So when the manufacturing order that consumes that paint is completed, then the commitment drops and the in-stock quantity also drops. And that is how the workflow for purchase orders affects stock movements for materials.